you. Um, my name is Grosha Smube from the National University of Science and Technology in Zimbabwe, and I work with the Institute of Development Studies of that university. I'm presenting to you a paper on remittances in rural Zimbabwe from consumption to investment by myself and uh, Dr. Georgina Mesetis Gomez from the Institute of uh, Social Studies in the Netherlands. Basically, my presentation is going to be structured in this way. I'll present the introduction, research questions, the methodology, and then an overview of remittances and local development, the findings, conclusions, and recommendations. Now, um, migration has over time been a major global development issue, according to quite a number of uh, scholars. And there are many effects of emigration, and remittances are one of the main noted benefits, specifically in most African countries and uh, some Asian countries. And then uh, it has also been noted that remittances uh, now form a bigger chunk of monetary inflows into most of these developing countries compared to cooperation aid. And then remittances have considerable development impacts based on household forecast methodologies, where households are being used as the unit of analysis. But the missing link has been an analysis of longer term uh, effects on local economies to say, as much as uh, remittances benefit households, but what is the effect of these remittances in the long term, in the long run, on local economies? And in Zimbabwe, remittances are mainly uh, have been said to be used for consumption and less on investment. This is according to studies by uh, such scholars as Maposa, Tevera and Zinyama, 2002. And um, the benefits of uh, focus on the short-term effects and recipient households and using these as units of analysis. But the long-term effect, like I've said, uh, is not focused on especially trying to measure the, infect, the, the impact of, local, of remittances on local economies. The methodological focus should be on local economies than uh, households, as uh, uh, supported by Tihas 2006. And the main argument for this paper is that remittances do contribute to local development in Ward 2, which is the focal uh, area for this particular study, which is in a, a district called Cholocho in Zimbabwe, and it contrib they contribute in diverse ways. Oh, sorry. Um, the research questions are, do receiving households, that are the remittance receiving households, use remittances for consumption or investment? And secondly, what kind of investments do remittances promote in the local economy of Cholocho district? And how do these remittances impact on local development? And the methodology, the study area is a small village in the Matebeleland North Province of, of Zimbabwe, and it's a rural area that is uh, mainly dependent on subsistence agriculture. And then uh, we used uh, mixed qualitative methods, where one of them was the ethnographic technique that we called, called Follow the Money, which is sort of an adaptation of Caroline Moser's Livelihoods Vulnerability Framework. Um, we also used uh, interviews with key informants and entrepreneurs and also a bit of household survey. Now, uh, this is the adaptation of Caroline Moser's Vulnerability uh, Framework, where we identify the vulnerability context for specifically the households, and then the outcome of the crisis, the type of solution, the outcome of solution, and um, as we proceed further. Now, uh, the vulnerability context, the first one is, remember I said this particular study area is mainly dependent on subsistence agriculture. So we're saying that uh, agricultural productivity is compromised, and that would lead to food shortages, increased drought spells, loss of income, and the sector is generally unproductive. And then the education and health, uh, which is human capital, children drop, drop out from school, high outbreak of illness, and then infrastructure, loss of decent housing, that is unavailability of touching grass due to low rainfall, dilapidated road networks resulting in uh, transport shortages. And, third, and fourthly, we're saying there are gender inequalities where there is a notable increase we are looking forward to a notable increase in the workload for women where their practical gender needs um, are worsened. And we're saying the type of solution 
that we are hoping to see is the remittances where they are coming into is all those burdens on this particular village. And we are saying with the, the, the remittances in the agricultural sector, we'll see increased income and increased uh, consumption, which is uh, basically resulting in availability of alternatives. And then we're saying under education and health, which is human capital development, we're saying there will be increased school enrollment, increase in uh, health conditions, that is primary health care. And we're also saying in infrastructure, which is physical capital development, there will be improvement of housing by building modern structures, improved access to transport, availability of uh, alternative transport per se. And then uh, on gender inequalities, you're saying there will be improvement in women's practical gender needs. And then uh, after remittances have been used and they produce those solutions, we are hoping that there will be surplus from these remittances. And the surplus could result in investment. And this investment would uh, either be, in, that, that will be in enterprise creation. And these enterprises will be either survivalist enterprises or growth-oriented enterprises. And if they are growth-oriented uh, enterprises, then we are saying that there will be a result in local development. Um, the concepts there, a few concepts that we have. Consumption, we are relating basically to complete utilization of all the funds remitted on daily consumables. And in terms of investment, we are not looking at any rocket science investment, but basically money that was not consumed immediately, but rather used on acquiring non-consumables. That could be profitable in future. And then local development, we are basically referring to enterprise creation, employment creation, increased agricultural productivity, and infra uh, infrastructure improvement. Now, on remittances and local development from literature, it is noted that there are diverse effects of remittances on development. And uh, infrastructure development and investment results from these remittances in the long run. And there is increased consumption in receiving households in terms of health, education, and family welfare. And in sub-Saharan Africa, remittances are invested mainly in real estate, which is provision of housing. And we're trying to see, is there, are there any similarities between this and what is happening in this uh, rural village in, in Zimbabwe? Um, it is also noted in literature that there is um, lack of other investment instruments, uh, like microfinance and uh, a conducive environment for, for, for investing. No sound economic policies to promote stable economic growth. Uh, they are optimistic versus pessimistic views uh, generally on the benefits of uh, my, uh, remittances and some countering saying that remittances mainly uh, perpetuate a dependency syndrome and compromising locally practiced strategies that could promote growth. And um, it will be unrealistic to expect remittances to promote local development where complementary infrastructure services and ecological conditions are not favorable. Now on the findings, basically in this particular rural village, there is a high incidence of remittances, like I said, and mainly it's remittances from South Africa, which are remitted, remitted in the form of South African runs or groceries. And um, the first picture to my left is uh, the, the common mode of transport that is used basically when uh, transporting the goods kind of remittances, which is the same as the one to, my bottom, to your bottom right. Now, in this particular village, three quarters of households have migrated members. They have people migrated and mainly moving to South Africa. And there is seasonality in terms of remittance flows with highest income uh, amounts coming when migrants themselves visit, and basically in December, which is the Christmas period. And there is a high incidence of both cash and in-kind remittances, which are received through Omalaita. This is the uh, native name used for these guys, which means basically those who carry. So they carry things from South Africa to the destination in Zimbabwe. Um, in-kind remittances mainly consist of food, clothes, building material, 
furniture, among other things. And cash remittances basically range from 150 South African rands to 2,000 thereabout, and the average being 500 South African rands, which is more or less equivalent to 50 United States dollars. Uh, one of the most notable findings that we found in this particular village is that remittances are the major source of income, and they are basically used to purchase food, clothing, they're used on education, on health, agricultural inputs, building a brick under asbestos or zinc housing structures. And then they also boost households' asset bases that sustain them in shock eventualities. And these are basically in the form of scotch cards, bicycles, generators, solar panels, livestock, and also used in uh, agriculture, which increases the income of these households. And then there is also um, a high incidence of these remittances being used in community development projects. For example, dam construction for water, for their livestock, and for agricultural practices, and also uh, on local, in a local clinic. Um, this is a, a typical example of an African, of a, let me not say African, but rather a, a, a rural housing structure for most of the people who live in uh, village two, where it's the thatched huts. But with the incidence of remittances, you'll see that there is construction of these modern kind of housing structures, like the, the, the house in the middle there, um, which has come around as a result of these remittances. And like I said, remittances were also used in the finalization in constructing the local clinic that is at your, your right bottom there. And uh, there was also a notable uh, practice that not receiving households in this particular village also uh, benefit indirectly through the ripple effect of remittances. And they develop innovative strategies to rip off some of the benefits of remittances by basically working for some of these receiving households to then get paid from the remittances. Therefore, receiving households form the consumptive middle class that absorbs labor from, non -receiving, from their non-receiving counterparts. And on remittances and local development in general, remittances result, uh, lead to local development, which is reflected by employment creation, investment in small enterprises, increased agricultural productivity, and infrastructure development. Why I am saying that there is uh, employment creation is that you realize as we go that there is a high incidence of in, uh, enterprise development in this particular locality, not necessarily from those households that receive uh, remittances, but basically from outsiders, from outside the Cholocho district, who will come and uh, invest, being attracted by the high incidence of remittances. And uh, less than 10% of receiving households venture into investment in terms of enterprises, so that's a very small number of them. Infrastructure improvements also result from the, the, the incidence of remittances, which is basically improved housing structures, financing of community clinics and dam construction. And remittances also wield a ripple effect on, local, on the local economy, and they trigger entrepreneurial ventures from people based outside the locality. And they promote, promote agricultural productivity and growth. Promoting agricultural productivity and growth is basically through the purchasing of livestock that is used as draft power for agriculture, and also uh, purchasing of agricultural inputs like fertilizers, manure, seeds, uh, among other things. So this is a typical example of some of the enterprises that are prevalent in that particular village, which have been constructed as a result of remittances. In the top left picture, there is a general dealer shop that sells basic grocery items, and then there is a butchery and also a liquor shop, which were constructed from um, remittance money. And there are a lot more others that are constructed also being attracted by the high incidence of remittances in this particular village. And there is also a, an enterprise called Munduabantu Enterprises, which is a filling station supposedly uh, put up or constructed to service uh, and provide fuel for 
scars of people who stay in this particular village because there is a, a high incidence of ownership of cars by the people who have uh, migrated to South Africa. And when they come back, they don't have to go to the business center to get their cars fueled, but they can fuel from uh, within. And that is a grinding mill as well that was constructed there to service the local community as a result of remittances. There is also uh, employment creation in terms of uh, shopkeepers who are working in these general dealerships and butcheries. And there is a high incidence as well of maids and head boys, those who assist in households and who look after their people's livestock in the particular village, which is basically a form <laughs> of employment. And there is also brick molding, which is temporal self-imposed employment uh, by young people in this particular uh, village. And there is also seasonal and or temporal employment for the non-receiving households, especially in agriculture, and they'll be working for the households that receive remittances. And payment is either in kind or in cash, which, of which the cash is from the remittances. This is an example of the young people who mold bricks, and then they back them to, to, to produce the red bricks that they then sell for the construction of... Uh, brick under asbestos or zinc kind of households or uh, housing structures. Now, in conclusion, it is uh, noted that remittances flow through informal channels to village two in Chorocho districts, and uh, they are the mainstay of economic activity in the study area. They contribute to local development through promoting productive consumption, which attracts investment, and that's a ripple effect, and they promote local development through investment in enterprise creation, even if the receiving households themselves do not invest, but they attract investors from outside who are then coming to try and assimilate as much of the remittances as is possible. They are used uh, also, they also promote investment through increasing agricultural productivity and infrastructure improvements and income generation. Recommendations. Basically, actors in development should kind of promote availability of other investment instruments in this particular locality so that there could be an increase uh, in the benefits that are accrued from remittances. And policymakers to coil economic policies that promote stable economic growth local authorities to ensure availability of complementary infrastructure and services favorable to promoting impact of remittances on local development. And finally, there could be uh, further research on the sustainability of the resultant enterpri enterprises in this particular locality to say, as much as they are being uh, created, how sustainable are they in the event that these remittances stop flowing into this particular locality? Thank you very much.